it's Nancy from CPH Homes at Keller Williams NJ Metro Group. We run into a lot of clients who are not quite ready to purchase right now, but they're thinking about doing it in the next year. So maybe it's because they're seeing the rent go up around them. Maybe they're growing their family. Maybe they're moving to a new city, getting a new job. Maybe they're just trying to purchase a home so they can build equity and start building some wealth for themselves. Listen, if you're thinking about that, then you're also thinking about the finances and what you should do to get your pre-approval. So today I just want to give you a couple of hints about how to get prepared for getting your pre-approval to start your home shopping. Okay. You ready? So first of all, I'm just going to say this. Getting a home loan does not have to be complicated, all right? Preparation is really the key. And knowing what to expect sort of makes all the difference moving forward. And I'm going to give you a little hint. And that little hint is if you are talking to and you find a realtor that you trust and one that you want to work with, please, please, please talk to the lender that they recommend. Honestly, can I, can I just tell you truthfully, I have done this a thousand times and I'm going to do it 150 to 200 more times again this year. So I have met a lot of lenders and had a lot of experiences. And I'm telling you now, I've whittled it down to the ones that I trust who I think are going to do a really good job. So please listen to your realtor, at least have a conversation with the lender that they recommend. Okay. And here's, here's where we launch into this. Getting a sense of how much you can afford is definitely going to be that first step when you talk to that lender. All right. Okay, so before you even talk to them, and if you're currently renting, for instance, you kind of want to calculate the cost of renting versus buying to start, right? Because being ready is more than just about, you know, can I make monthly payments, right? You have to have enough of a cushion that in the case that you have an emergency, whether it's, um, you know, surprise, hurricane, flood, home repair, um, speaking out of uh, experience here, whether you have a sudden healthcare emergency or even a family emergency, you need to have enough cushion so that you can still afford your mortgage so you don't go into, you know, foreclosure. Okay. Now, general rule of thumb is that most people can afford roughly four times their income in terms of how much they can borrow. But please understand that you really have to factor in all your debt. So if you have a car loan, a student loan, credit card debt, You've got to subtract that from your income and operate your rule of thumb number off of that. OK, now it's important to understand what lenders are actually looking for when it comes to getting a mortgage. It's really helpful to sort of understand what the lender is trying to do. OK, they're trying to decide ultimately whether they want to loan you a pocket, you know, like a bunch of money and what the terms of that loan will be. So then they're going to want to know that you can pay right now. They're going to want to know that you can pay later for 30 years. And they also want proof that you can do so. And that's how they evaluate loan candidates. They base, base it off of your assets, your income, your credit, and your debt to income ratio. So your assets are what you have, right? Your income is how much you're going to have by through earning. Your credit is how you've been treating your money so far. And are you paying your debts on time right now and your debt to income ratio, which of course was um, we talked about a little bit earlier in relationship to that rule of thumb number. OK, so after that, you're going to want to start to consolidate your down payment money because lenders are looking to find proof that the down payment money that you have or the money that you use for closing costs is actually your own money. All right. So they'll want to see two months worth of bank statements for any funds that you plan on using for your down payment. If they see any large transfers, large deposits, they're going to ask you for explanations about it. And if one of those large, large, uh, you know, um, if one of the large deposits is from a family member, for instance, they're going to want to see a gift letter so that they know that that money is being gifted to you by your family. And that's not actually a loan. You don't have to pay it back. OK, um, and I'm assuming you've guessed all this by now. If we cannot source those funds, if you can't prove where that money is coming from, they're not going to end up using that money as part of what they count for your loan. OK, so in other words, mattress money, that just, that's not going to work. So 
save yourself a little trouble, start consolidating all your down payments now. And that way that two month transaction history isn't going to raise any red flags when you start the mortgage process. Now, this will get you a better sense of how much you can afford. And now it's time to more accurately estimate what it is that you can pay. And that will be a basic pre-approval process. Almost every mortgage company I know starts with a basic pre-approval process. Many of them you can do online. And this particular thing, they'll run a credit check. All right. Just FYI, please do not let every single person run a credit check on you. Um, if, if you have too many credit checks, you know, run credit checks run, it might ding your score. Now at this point, it is basically time to go home shopping. So you have your pre-approval in hand and you've learned more about your financing options, whether you want a fixed rate, whether you want an adjustable rate mortgage, um, whether you want to pay points, take credits, how much you want to put towards your down payment. These are all things that you can refine, fine tune with your lender and your realtor as you go. Okay. Listen, a good idea is practice what it looks like to pay your mortgage bill because they'll give you an estimated monthly payment. So practice what it feels like. Put aside that amount of money every month and just sort of see how it feels. Does it still feel like a comfortable budget? If not, then you might want to rethink this and move the number up and down. Okay. Now, FYI, please remember, do not make any weird sudden moves during this process. What I mean by that is avoid new credit inquiries, okay? And don't change a job. Don't quit a job. Don't change a job. Try to minimize the movement, right? The mortgage process is easier when they have less to investigate and prove when it comes to your finances, okay? So it's basically a good idea to avoid any credit inquiry. So don't try to buy a car. Don't buy a large piece of furniture or a boat, or I mean, you'd be surprised what people do. Try not to do those things. Don't apply for more credit while you're trying to get, um, while you're trying to get a home loan. Okay. Wait till after your mortgage has already been funded. Okay. And like I said before, please don't change jobs. They need to verify with your employer what you're doing. So once again, try not to do that until after the mortgage has funded. Okay. Uh, if you end up doing that, then you're just going to require additional paperwork and it'll be sort of a bigger pain in the patootie, but it is what it is. All right. So guess what? You are on your way to being funded for the purchase of your first home. So now it's time to go neighborhood shopping. Um, I look forward to doing that with you. And I will see you guys next week. If you have at any time, if you have any questions, you are always welcome to reach out to us. 917-992-3098. Have a great one.